Hi everyone, welcome back to Brookdale Farm. Well, we're just doing a little bit of work on our old International C1300 truck here. Um, the tyres on it are rubbish. Um, this is one of the best ones. It hasn't been sitting flat for 20 years. Um, I just thought I would talk about the split rim wheels and a little bit of safety with them. So, this truck has split rim wheels, but they were common on an awful lot of older vehicles. Um, this wheel here, I'm pretty sure is a, a Nissan wheel, uh, but Land Cruisers had some almost identical wheels. Um, this might actually be the Land Cruiser one. Uh, there's very little difference between them other than the number of bolts that hold them on. Um, a lot of old buses and trucks and even reasonably modern trucks use split rims but you have to be very careful when you're splitting when you are fitting tires to them as they can be quite dangerous so what's a split rim well if we have a close look at this one um, we've got a little uh, gap here um, so this piece and this piece are actually two separate rims Two, two separate pieces so this is the rim of our truck um, I've cleaned it up a little bit uh, before we refit it so this is the main part of the rim and then we have the split ring here um, now there are a number of different ways they do the split rings this is a two-piece wheel but they also do some three-piece wheels um, and then some of the older stuff have really odd systems so the old uh, chev and ford flathead v8 type trucks um, have a a really odd system um, but anyway you you need to have you need to understand how your particular one goes together before you start fitting them but basically there is a lip up under here This piece sits on. Um, so if you have a look at, let me get it in the frame. Um, we have a look at this. There's a little step on here, um, and that step fits under this lip here. Um, hard to do this with one hand. Um, so it sits in there like that. As you pump up the tyre, the tyre bead sits on here and that holds this piece in hard against here um, and stops it jumping off. Now if you, are, if you do not do this correctly, this, uh, particularly on the older ones, they have a much, much smaller lip on them um, and this can slip off as you pump the tyre up. Um, and then this becomes a projectile and it can be exceptionally dangerous. Now, if we come back to this wheel over here and have a look at it, um, the, the amount of pressure on this piece here is actually pretty phenomenal. So, on this truck, I run about 30 pounds per square inch in the tyres. The Land Cruisers run up to... I think the book says up to about 60 pounds per square inch. So square inch is that big. By the time you get 30 pounds, 30 pounds is about uh, 13 and a half kilos. Um, so by the time you get that much all the way around here, you end up with about seven tons of pressure pushing on this side wall all the way around um, and if this piece comes off and hits you with that much pressure behind it it will kill you uh, there's an awful lot of injuries that are uh, occur from these tires so there's a few things that we just need to check before we fit the tire to the wheel so before we fit the tire we want to make sure that there's no dirt or anything on this surface here or this lip or round here. Now if these are old tyres you get a lot of rust build up on here um, and that can um, 
that that expands and that means this lip will not sit in there properly so you really need to clean off all of the dirt and the rust before you fit the tire now when we're fitting tires to our split rims obviously we have the tire um, split rims always run tubes you cannot run tubeless tires on your split rim because the rim doesn't seal air tight we also have a rust band this is sort of a u-shaped piece of rubber um, and that stops the tube from getting stuck in between these two bits here as you pump it up um, also stops the tube rubbing and stuff like that so we're going to assemble the tube and the rust band into the tire next <clears throat> so the tubes normally also have a long valve stem on them um, and the rust bands have a hole for the valve stem to go through it doesn't really matter where you put the the valve uh, in relation to your tire the first thing we do is we want to stuff the um, the tire the tube into the tire Next, we want to put the rust band into the tire. Um, so we'll feed the tube through, the, the valve through first, um, and then we just squeeze the, the U section up and stuff it in. And this also helps to hold the, the tube in place while we're putting the tire on. So once we've got it in, we can see the rust band in there um, with the tube sticking through. Now the next thing that we have to do is while we feed the tyre onto the wheel, we need to get that, that tube there through this hole here and then through this hole and it's a bit hard on these uh, these wheels they don't didn't leave quite enough of a cut out here but basically the tire just drops on once we've got that that valve through here Okay, once we've worked the tube all the way in and the rim most of the way through and the valve stem sort of into the right spot, we can lie the tyre down and start to put the split rim on. So we just want to make sure that it's sitting right down as far as we can get it. Sometimes you need some little blocks of wood underneath it just to hold the rim up. At the moment it's sitting on the tyre but the rim can come up a little bit. So we'll just sit some blocks of wood underneath and that just helps us to get the split rim on properly. Okay, so next we need to start working this piece in. We just start at one end and we work around um, sometimes tire levers can be quite handy for this sometimes a rubber mallet is all you need to sort of get it to sit down into place um, so i'm going to just um, like i said before all of these are slightly different so if you're doing these on your own vehicle make sure that you know how the ones for your particular vehicle should fit on before you try it yourself.
Okay, so we've got the rim sitting down. You can see there's a gap here, so it's not sitting in place properly here. Uh, but as the tyre pumps up, that will lift up into place. Um, generally, it looks like it's sitting in the right spot all the way around. It's clipped down into the thing properly. Now, the issue is that if the t in here, if the tyre bead comes up behind that ridge on the split rim, it can pop it off. So you need to make sure that when you're pumping it up, that ridge comes up on the outside and holds it in place rather than to start, rather than starting to push it off. So there's a few tricks with pumping these up to do them safely. A lot of tyre shops that are doing truck tyres uh, and split rims regularly will have a cage like this for putting the tyres in uh, while they're inflating them. Uh, you can roll the tyre in here. There's a safety chain that goes across it. Um, you keep your inflation nozzle on um, and then can inflate it usually with a regulated air supply uh, without standing right next to it. If you don't have a cage like this there are other ways to do it to make yourself as safe as possible. Now before we pump up our new tyre we're going to take the old wheel off. Now one thing to note on a lot of trucks and heavy vehicles, um, the wheels on the left hand side of the vehicle have a left hand thread on them. Usually there is an L stamped on the end of the nut, the wheel nut, uh, the, the bolt, um, but it's also usually nearly impossible to read. So this one's upside down, you can just see it there. Um, so if you're ever trying to change a tyre and it feels like they're just getting tighter and tighter and tighter, try going the other way instead, that might help you out. Now to inflate this tyre safely, the first thing we want is a chuck on our compressor that we can clip onto there and walk away from so that we are not sitting here holding it on right in front of it if something goes wrong. The other thing that we're going to do is we are going to bolt this wheel on. It's hard to do one handed. We're going to turn this wheel back to front so that the split rim is facing into the truck and we are going to bolt it on just with a couple of bolts this way round. That way if anything goes wrong the split rim is going to be projected in towards the middle of the truck not out towards us um, and we are much safer. Now most dual wheels are designed to go on both ways around these wheels are not dual wheels, but they will fit both ways around. So I'm just going to put a couple of bolts on that now to hold it in place. Um, and then we can inflate this wheel. Okay, so we've got our wheel bolted on. We've got our compressor line connected to it. Uh, now we just need to pump it up. Okay, so we've got our tyre fully pumped up. And we're just going to climb under here and have a bit of a look and make sure it all looks all right before we move it. So we can see that the tyre is has seated, the um, band is in the correct position, so that all looks good. Now we can take it off and turn it around and put it on the correct way around. So we're all done with this tyre now. Hopefully this little video has given, given you an idea about how you can make sure you do this job safely. Um, if you don't know how your split rims work, please get somebody who knows what they're doing to do it for you, um, because they can be very dangerous. Um, but uh, hopefully, yeah, this has helped some of you out to, uh, to learn how to do it better. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.